you're the author of a new book on climate change. Do we need another book on climate change? Well, that's a good question, Terry. Uh, there are indeed a lot of books on climate change, and there's a lot of very good books on climate change. However, the situation's changed in the last uh, six months quite dramatically. And it's changed in the following way. If we go back 12 or 24 months, the great majority of the public was convinced that there was a very real problem of dangerous global warming caused by human carbon dioxide emissions. Now, it is true that we emit carbon dioxide. It's true it's a greenhouse gas. And it's a good question to ask, are we perhaps having a dangerous effect on climate? Uh, that question was first asked in the early 1990s, mainly by the big green organisations, um, and a sensible thing to think about. So we did. And we're now in 2010. We're 20 years down the track. We've uh, had several thousand scientists through the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. That's the United Nations body that advises governments. Uh, we've had several thousand scientists uh, look at this. Uh, they've spent close to $100 billion of research and related money and they have been unable to measure the human effect. Now, that doesn't mean it isn't there. It just means it's so small that we can't yet measure it, and therefore it's very unlikely to be dangerous. So, nonetheless, the public belief was, until recently, that we should do something to prevent this unmeasurable change. What's happened in the last six months is a number of scientific, well, scandals is probably the right word for them, uh, and the one some of the viewers will have heard of is called Climate Gate, whereby the group in the United Kingdom, at the University of East Anglia, that was responsible for providing the United Nations with its temperature statistics, um, that group basically has been shown to be providing records that are um, historically not accurate. Now, that's caused, because there was press commentary on that, that's caused a big swing in public opinion. So we're now at a situation where the majority of the public are deeply suspicious as to whether they have been told the truth on climate change. And my book addresses that. And it addresses it by starting with the premise, climate change is a complicated thing. And it's got various sides to it. You often hear it said there's two sides to the issue. Well, that's silly. There's as many sides to the argument as there are qualified scientists to discuss it. It's immensely complicated. It cannot be reduced to a he says, she says simplification. There are three lenses, if you like, through which you can look at climate change. And I call them three realities of climate change. And those are science reality, virtual reality, which is the computer modeling, and political social reality, because we live in a society and it is at the moment uh, true that climate change is a big political issue. It's really very important to tease out those three different realities. And that's what my book does. And then at the end of all that, having understood better the realities of climate change, it's also very important to have a constructive way forward. And so the uh, way in which this book differs from most others on the market is it provides an explanation of what's been going on. It explains the science in an elementary way to some degree, but it provides a sensible path for future policy. Um, on the question of science, as a layperson, um, to me, there's something missing from your three realities, and that is observation. Have well, we learned anything from history? Well, of course, that, that's part of scientific reality. Um, and the, the science reality is that temperature always changes. Climate always changes. That's what climate does. Uh, geologists have a, a, um, a long history of studying this. Uh, it's well known that just 20,000 years ago we were in an ice age and now we're in a warm interglacial period and in another 100,000 years in the future we'll be back in an ice age again. That's a bit longer than the next election but those natural cycles are behind everything that goes on out the window with weather and climate. Over the longer term, over decades, centuries, millennia, and out to hundreds of thousands of millions of years, climate always changes. So you're absolutely right when you say we need to describe that and look at it. And when you do that, you say, well, here's the record of climate change for the last million years or so. What do we see? Well, we see that it always changes. Ah. But weren't we told that at the end of the 20th century we had global warming and it was dangerous? And wasn't that warming warmer than ever before or took place at a faster rate than ever before? And the answer is no. The warming at the end of the late 20th century was a very mild warming. It falls completely 
within the bounds of previous natural variation. Right at the moment, we've been cooling for about 10 years, so we've turned over a little peak on the temperature curve. This is entirely to be expected, nothing to be worried about here at all, but that's part of the science reality that is missing from the public discussion. What, uh, again, from a, as a layperson, what part does the sun play in influencing the well, temperatures on Earth? A, a great deal, and it provides, I mean, there is heat comes from the inside of the Earth, because uh, as you're aware, we have a partly molten core, and that heat is conducted outwards very slowly. So there is some leakage of heat from the inside, and a volcano such as is erupting in Iceland at the moment is a good manifestation of that. But the amount of heat that reaches us that way is very small compared with the amount we receive every day from the sun. So the Earth's climate system is dominantly driven by that solar radiation. Indeed, climate is basically about the uh, redirection of that radiation around the planet. And, and we have convection currents which cause clouds in the atmosphere, and they go off and they cause rain and cooling. We have big ocean currents which transport heat around, and all those dynamic things that are part of climate uh, are, are ceaselessly changing. But the energy that drives that whole system comes from the sun, yes. Well, the next question is then, is that solar radiation constant? And the answer to that is, well, scientists used to think so. Indeed, they used to call the amount of uh, um, radiation received at the top of the atmosphere was called the solar constant because it was believed to be constant. Well, it turns out it isn't. It varies slightly on the 11-year length of the sunspot cycle. And then there are longer term cycles of solar origin of a, a bit more energy or a bit less energy over periods of hundreds of years and indeed thousands of years. So the sun's energy is not absolutely constant and our climate system reacts to those changes. I understand from my reading that uh, there was a solar cycle, I think it's 23, uh, which was due to end three or four years ago and it hasn't happened yet. It, it has just happened, um, but it's certainly true that uh, cycle 23 uh, then should should go through a low period. The, the cycles, the peak of the cycles, are the many sunspots. So we have a big peak on the curve of sunspots. And then we go into a low and we come up to the next cycle peak of sunspots. And you're right, in the uh, early part of this century, uh, we've been on peak 23 and now coming down off it. And we're going into 24. The gap between cycle 23 and 24 turned out to be longer than usual. And when that happens, we know from the historical record of sunspot observations that the next cycle will be less intense. There'll be fewer sunspots. And that means the next cycle is also cooler. There is a planetary cooling. So because the gap or the saddle between cycle 23, which has just finished, and cycle 24, which has just started, was longer, scientists are now fairly confident that we are going to go through a couple of decades of cooler weather. How much cooler? Perhaps half a degree, perhaps a degree. But hang on a minute. The models that we hear about from the UNIPCC and others didn't say that we were going to be cooling now. They ah, had us warming. Indeed. But remember, there are three realities of climate change. Now, we've been talking about the science reality. You're now moving on to the virtual reality. And the virtual reality of climate change is what happens inside those computer models. And essentially, they're big PlayStation 4 computer game consoles. And you put the numbers in, and you have a model of the climate system mathematically inside the black box, and out the other end comes the projected, not predicted, projected temperature in 10, 20, 50, 100 years' time. Now, why do I draw the difference between predictions and projections? And that's not my distinction. That's the intergovernmental panel's distinction. The difference is this, that a forecast, such as the weather forecast on the uh, television news every night, or a prediction has been validated. The model that produces that has been validated and shown to be accurate to a certain specified statistical degree of accuracy. The computer models used by the IPCC have never been validated. It's unlikely they can be validated.